In today's video, I'm going to tackle a subject. Um, I've heard this hundreds of times, hundreds of times, literally hundreds of times. The question is this. Your guy says, hey, I have an existing car alarm system in my vehicle and I'm very happy with it. Okay? He's real happy with it, doesn't want to change anything, but he wants to enhance it. How he wants to enhance it is he wants to add a remote start. Okay? Sounds pretty simple. Um, well, what's entailed, right? Well, here's where the tricky part gets, in, gets involved, and it's something that the average person probably wouldn't pick up on had they been doing, doing it themselves. It comes back to what everybody's told you growing up. It's so much quicker to do things right the first time than it is to do it wrong many times after. This is a clear cut case of exactly that. Can you do it? Have I done it? I've done it only about a thousand times and I've only done it about a thousand times because I've only done about a thousand jobs for people who don't have the foresight to do things right properly the first time. I've told people I've advised, I've paid, that, that have paid me for um, their, my service, my time, my, my skills, my work, whatever. I've told them don't do it, don't do it, do this, do that. They don't want to listen. People are like electricity. They follow the path of least resistance. They want to get something quick. They want something that goes beep. They want something cheap. And then they only to realize later on down the road that they didn't get what they want. Well, this is what those people wind up doing. They have their alarm system and then they come and they want to buy a remote start. So they go online, someone like me or whoever, you can only do worse than me, and they buy a remote start. Say, will this work with my car? Of course, it's in stock. Of course, it's got to work, right? So now they get this black box and they have a remote start and they look under their dashboard, they're faced with the wiring on their existing alarm system. Now, some of the stuff, not so complicated. On your existing alarm, you're going to have multiple outputs besides what's the bare necessity for locking and unlocking. You're going to have channel 2, 3, and 4. Any decent alarm system is at least going to have channel 2 to pop your trunk release. So that's going to throw a negative output. Right? Any remote start, slave remote start, I should say, an add-on remote start, is going to have what's called an activation input wire. So once the ground signal from your alarm system goes out, goes into the activation input wire of the remote start, here's what happens. The remote start cuts on, it turns on the lights. If your alarm system is equipped with voltage sensing, the alarm is going to see voltage on that power light circuit and trigger. Now you're going to have a false alarm problem. If that doesn't happen, and because it might not, you can turn off that to program and setting on most alarm systems. If that doesn't happen, and you're one of these people who really likes that shock sensor, really sensitive because you don't like anybody touching your baby, here's what happens. The car shakes. Shock sensor goes off. Your alarm false is that way. So now you fix that problem, now you got this problem. So you go to your shock sensor, you turn it down, or if you're even crafty enough, you figure out a way to add a relay, open it up so that way when this is on the remote start, now you have another black box going in there to open up the trigger wire for your shock sensor. So now you got you got jingle bells going under the, underneath your dashboard just to fix that problem. But are we done yet? No. Your alarm system has two types of power. You have black, I'm sorry, black is brown, then you have your red, and you have your yellow. Red is your constant, yellow is your heat accessory. So when you turn your vehicle on, your alarm system is going to see the power on that wire. And it has to be in that way because alarms see a sequence in order to function properly. So say, for instance, you turn your car off, the alarm is seeing the ignition going off. Then it's seeing the door open, door closed, then 30 seconds elapses, the alarm sets itself. If not seeing the correct power constant on 12 volts and on the other wire to show an ignition, it doesn't perform properly. But here's what happens. When you remote start, it throws power to the ignition. So the alarm sees that and again triggers. So now you have a third problem. Your alarm is going off. So you see most of these problems are all related to alarm triggering situations. Now some alarm systems have pass-through inputs for the ignition stuff or they have uh, ground running, before running, pulse before start, after start, all this kind of stuff. It's not uncommon on decent remote starters, but my thought process is that anybody who's going through all this drama is probably trying to do this affordably or on the cheap. And cheap components typically don't have very good high-end component functions, features, or any of this other stuff. So you're faced with all these problems. But here's the worst thing that happens to these people. 
they get all this stuff in there, they get it working, and they think that they're happy. Then they go home, and they see their friend or their family, and they're starting a car from a mile away down the road, and he can only get from here to here to remote start the car. So how come I only get three feet of range on my, on my alarm, on my remote start? Here's why. A regular alarm has a piece of chicken wire as your antenna. A real remote start is going to have an active antenna, which is powered by 12 volts DC and has super high frequency range and operating distance. Not only are you losing out this, you have your lousy antenna, you can never get a two-way uh, system, you can never upgrade. It can never be what it should be right the first time. So the moral of this video is not to be a rant, it's not to sound like a lunatic, it's just me trying to give you some good advice. If you're going to do a, a job, you're going to get an alarm remote start, make a good decision. Speak to somebody who's knowledgeable in their field and can give you good direction, not just looking to quickly take your money out of your pocket like a vacuum cleaner and get you something that you're ultimately going to be dissatisfied with. That's what I do, and I hope that this was enlightening to anybody who watches it. This is what I try to share, and this is what I try to bring to you. So there you have it. There's how you do your anti-remote start to your existing alarm.